When we are solving equations, we are always looking for an inverse operation. What that means is when I see addition, I do subtraction, the opposite. Inverse operations are opposite of multiplications. Inverse is division. Additions is subtraction. What do I see right here? And what's my goal is to get the variable by itself. Right now, this plus 9 is with the x. That's why I know I need to look at that instead of at this 3. I see addition, so I do subtraction on both sides. No laziness. You need to do this every time. I teach this. I write things twice a day for my two different classes, and I do it every single time. So should you. What's that leave us with on the left side? We have positive 9 and negative 9 gives us 0. So what's left is the x. On the right side of this equation, we have a positive 3 and a negative 9, which leaves us with a negative 6. We check our work. So I'm going to rewrite this with negative 6 in place of x. What is negative 6 plus 9? So if I get 3 is equal to 3, then I know I've done it correctly. Let's move to number two. I see subtraction, so what am I going to do? And what am I adding? Two. Why the two and not the 11? Because two is with the F, and we want to get the variable by itself. So we're going to add the two. And by doing the inverse operation, we are zeroing this part out, leaving us with just the F. 11 plus two is equal to 13. Rewrite it as 13 minus 2 equals 11. 13 minus 2 is 11, so this checks. I find typically people who've made it into algebra have no problem with those. Where mistakes start to happen is when we get into multiplication and division. This one is multiplication. What is being multiplied here? Negative 4 and Z. What is the inverse operation of multiplication? Division. So I need to divide that negative 4. Unlike when I'm doing addition and subtraction, I'm not trying to zero it out. I'm trying to get an invisible positive 1. What is negative 4 divided by negative 4? 1. Negative divided by negative gives us a positive. And the fact that we have negative 4 over negative 4 gives us 1. That 1 stays invisible, and we get z is equal to negative 12. Because 48 divided by negative 4 gives us a negative number, and 48 divided by 4 is 12. So we're going to redo this as negative 4 times negative 12 equals positive 48. Negative times negative is positive, and 4 times 12 is 48. Okay, there's an invisible 1 in this problem number 4. Who knows where it is? It's in front of the variable. You can see this written as 1 over negative 3 times m. Sometimes, I'm just going to do this on a sticky note, sometimes you will see these written like this. Look at number 5. Because it doesn't have an invisible 1, they've put the fraction in front of the variable. This one just happened to have an invisible 1, so we like to leave those invisible because we're lazy in math, and if we can take shortcuts, we do. So just know that this is 1 over negative 3. That means we have to do its inverse, or its reciprocal, which is? Negative 3 over 1. And we do that to both sides. On the left side, are we going to get an invisible 1? 
because I have negative three over one times negative one over three, that's gonna become positive one. That means I have m on the left side of the equation. What do I have on the right? Negative 27. Our brains have been trained with math facts to see that nine and that three and to think three. Because of all those math facts you memorized in elementary school. That's why you can't take the shortcuts here. You have to write the reciprocal. Because if you don't, you're gonna think it's three. Do you guys see what I'm talking about there? It's negative 27, so we're going to put negative 27 where the M was and see if we get a positive nine. I have negative 27 divided by negative three. Does that give me a positive nine? Yes. yes. And it checks. Because the ones with fractions are where we find the most mistakes, we're gonna do two more practice ones together. Five, six, M is equal to 10. What should our first step be? Reciprocal of? Five, six, which is six over five. As always, there's an invisible one underneath this 10. So on the left side, six times five is 30, and five times six is 30. 30 over 30 is a positive one. That leaves us with just M. On the right side, I have 10 times six, and one times five. So it's 60 over five, but there's a shortcut. And I love shortcuts. This five and this 10 can be reduced before we multiply. What are the factors of 10? Two and five. So if I take the five out of both of these, I'm left with two. What's two times six? What was 60 divided by five? We get there either way, right? M is equal to 12 then. So we're going to rewrite this as 5 over 6 times 12 is equal to 10. We could do 5 times 12 divided by 6, or we could reduce the 6 again. If I take the 6 out of both of these, I'm left with 5 times 2, which is 10. Factoring is really important in algebra. It makes our lives easier. That's really what I'm doing there. I'm reducing by pulling out the factors that I can before I multiply. And last one we're going to do together before I let you do 4 on your own. 9 is equal to negative 3 over 4y. What's our reciprocal here? Four over negative three. Okay. Where's my shortcut on this one? I can take the three out first, can't I? Before I even deal with the positive negative, I'm just looking at this going, this is a negative times a positive. My result is going to be negative, right? So if I just write the negative down here, I don't have to think about the positive negative. Now I can go to the factoring. Nine is three times three over one. And if I take out those threes, I'm left with one of them, right? I can take this three and this three because three over three is one. So when I'm reducing by that, I'm basically using that principle that anything times one is itself but I'm also reducing it before I multiply. And what's left is four times three, which is 12, but it's a negative 12. We've already written that negative down there, is equal to y. To check this one, we're gonna do nine is equal to negative three over four times negative 12 over one. Where did I get the one? I just made it visible. Every whole number has a one underneath it, right? Okay. Negative three times a negative 12 is gonna be positive 36 divided by four, is that nine? Yes. Okay. 
or I can reduce, and what am I gonna pull out of this 12? Four, which leaves a three, and nine equals nine. Okay, I'm gonna give you guys a few minutes to work on the independent practice four problems on your own.